Hey YouTubers, Steven here. How's everybody doing? Okay, I've been thinking about this. I've been dreaming about this experiment for a while. It's been a long time since I've used ginger in a recipe. Uh, you remember the ginger pale ale that I made? Um, I'll find the link and I'll put it in the description below. So I really enjoy the Jamaican style ginger beer. Um, so I figured, you know what, it'd probably be a nice change from making beer or you know, wine coolers and uh, might be pretty good for me. So I started thinking, like I do with most of my recipes if I'm going to make something, um, I'll look at the YouTube videos and um, the forums and look up several recipes and kind of get a baseline of what the ingredients are for um, everybody's recipe. And then I just kind of take that as uh, the middle ground and then tweak it from there. Um, so I watched a lot of traditional uh, ginger beer videos and surprised to learn that uh, they make a ginger bug. Um, so we've got some, uh, some mason jars here. Uh, they're all sanitized and uh, so we're going to make some ginger bugs today uh, to get this little experiment going on. Um, so first let me explain uh, the traditional ginger beer. Um, you start with a bug and it's supposed to be one tablespoon of ginger root or grated ginger root, one tablespoon of sugar and then um, you know in about a cup of water, two cups of water. This here is 250 ml. Um, I'm hoping it'll serve my purpose. Um, and then uh, basically you feed it uh, a tablespoon of ginger root and a tablespoon of sugar every day. Give it a little stir the yeast that's on the ginger root um, will start to eat the sugar and then um, start the, the fermentation process and they'll also um, you know replicate and, and so on and so forth. The exact same as doing a yeast starter for when we make beer. Um, then after four to five days while it's fizzy um, then you would add it to uh, the ginger beer recipe uh, which is more grated ginger but um, we're going to steep it you know for several minutes but I won't get into that you can see the, the recipe is it's going to be a lot of fun <laughs> but I want to try and keep this short because I don't want to make this too long so what we're going to do we're going to do a traditional ginger buck in one mason jar so I'm going to feed this every day for four to five days now I don't plan on making the uh, the whole recipe um, until you know next weekend so if these are fermenting nicely then I'm just gonna put them in my uh, my beer fridge and then in this one I'm just going to put the four tablespoons of uh, grated ginger root four tablespoons of sugar and the water because I want to see if there's an actual difference to feeding the ginger bug or not feeding it um, my hypothesis is that they'll both be ready um, to go into a, a batch and be ready to ferment. Um, will there be a difference in taste? I'm not entirely sure. Now, this is where the traditional ginger beer recipes go a little different because uh, all the videos that I watched, they weren't making it for alcohol. They were just making it for like a soda or pop, as we say here in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so they their drinks are meant to be you know fizzy sweet and drunk within two to three days of making it so they only make really small batches um, in our case we want the alcohol uh, so um, let's get started I've got uh, my little container here I've got a grater um, I've got some brown sugar in my container here. So we're going to use brown sugar for the recipe and uh, got lots of nice pieces of ginger root here. So let me move the camera and uh, let's get this started. Alright, so I'm not entirely sure how much. Oh, two tablespoons of ginger root is going to be. Try and Turn it here so you can see how I'm just holding it into the plastic bucket there. Oh my goodness, this smells good. 
what I found in some of the videos that I was watching is this ginger bug is really good for making um, or using this for the carbonation for any of the other sodas or pops that you want to make. So, be kind of interesting to go along with this. If somebody's got a family recipe for uh, root beer, they would love to share, or a good recipe that, uh, that you make yourself. Maybe pass it along. I'd love to give it a try because I do like root beer. Um, I believe I mentioned before, but I sanitized all of this uh, prior. So, all right. Let's scoop up one tablespoon here. I was uh, what I read was one tablespoon packed. So that's pretty much what I have here. So we'll put the one in here. This is going to be our traditional. Spoon packed brown sugar. Glug, 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 glug. So, this is the traditional, which I'll put right here. I need four tablespoons for this one. I'm just going to do the brown sugar now just because it'll probably be easier. So, I'm going to put a lot of um, ginger root in there. I just had a premonition about this. When the natural yeasts kick in, I can, for, I can foresee this being a real mess. I'm going to set this in a pot. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> Alright, now let's see if I got enough 4 ounces of ginger root here. I should actually stir that first. Bear with me. Da, da, da. I have bu uh, my bucket of star sand over in the corner. One lesson I learned. Don't throw your, um, your sanitizer until you're totally done for the day. So here's the traditional. It's there's not a whole lot in it. <laughs> it looks pretty weak. And this is our I don't know what we call it. Well, let's call it super bug. Traditional bug. Super bug. 
Um, I think I think this one's going to ferment out. I, th I think they'll both start quite well. I'm not sure how they'll taste. That might be the difference. So we explained we're going to do a traditional bug, ginger bug, and we're going to do a super bug for the experiment. All right. Then we're going to do a third where I'm going to use Nottingham L yeast. Um, I love Nottingham for pretty much everything that I do. Um, but I should get out of that habit because I should start trying other yeasts. But I digress. So the third is going to be the same ginger beer recipe as the first two. Just we're using different yeasts um, just to see how they all interact. So since I'm going to make all the... The ginger root um, worked, if you will, for lack of a better word, at once. Um, I'm j then I'll just split it into three for the three demijohns that I have. And um, yeah, it, this should be interesting. So uh, let's bring on the ginger. All right, so day one. The colors changed a little bit, but we're going to feed the traditional one cover off. I have been watching the pieces of ginger going up and down. It's kind of funny. So just like yesterday, I just ground some ginger. Make sure that's in the, in the camera there. Drop it in. Oh man, that smells so good. tablespoon of brown sugar and I brought in a fork I'm just gonna give it a little stir get that mess out of there all right I'm just putting these lids on a little bit to thread But not all the way down. Just so that they can breathe a little bit. They look like there might have been a little bit of carbon, but di carbon dioxide um, action, but you know, some little bubbles. But we'll see tomorrow. Okay, here we are, day two. I'm gonna pop the stop off. You get some bubble action on the top. So I think we're starting to get a little fermentation ha ha action happening. Getting a little tongue tied here trying to get this stuff in here. Because my battery is low. But I did notice that the other one, the super bug, is getting darker. That's a good sign. And it also looks like it has some action going as well. Let's give this a little stir. Gotta make sure it's a good healthy bug. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put the top back on this. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put the cover on it. We're gonna seal it down. I'll give this one a little shake. Simulate the stirring action. But let's put the cover on them. Keep them airtight. Um, anyways, if the yeast is starting to, to grow and uh, replicate, duplicate, procreate, we should get some carbon dioxide build up in this. So tomorrow when I come to feed the bug, I'll crack the top and we should get that it's, if there's something happening. And I'll charge my battery in the meantime. Alright, here we are on day three. Uh, their color is starting to change. It, they're getting both getting a little browner. But, um, well, that could be just from the brown sugar, I suppose. But, uh, not really seeing that many bubbles. So, 
Let's have a look here. Well, it looks like there's some bubbles in there. Shall we give it a little shake? See if we've got any action. Well, let's hear for a hiss. Oh yeah, there we go. Yes, yes, yes. So we do have some carbon dioxide in here, so we're we're doing good, buddy. All right, so here's the super bug. Well, look at all the bubbles, the carbon dioxide that we have happening here. All right, I bet you this will hiss pretty good. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> Uh, there was a little hiss there, but all right. Let's stop playing with this. Let's feed the bug. So I've ground another tablespoon of ginger root. I'm gonna add that in there. Oh, and I also need. Tablespoon of brown sugar. That's starting to get a little full in there now. Oh, do you hear that? The yeast is loving the new sugar. <laughs> right on. So Experiment is getting interesting. I'm definitely getting more carbon dioxide uh, from this one, but uh, this one did have some bubbles, so we'll see. We'll see. I'm still holding out hope that uh, that this one's going to produce its own yeast. Uh, at the very least, uh, we'll see how much longer it takes. Uh, to develop um, some good yeast activity in there in comparison to the traditional so yeah we'll see all right here we are day four now the color is almost the same and I really think the color is just because of the brown sugar um, but uh, yeah I do see some CO2 bubbles that are just coming up. Let's hear if we have any hiss without shaking this up. Oh. Oh yeah, there was good hiss there. Alright. How about our super bug? How's this sounding? Oh, we have some. We have some. I do see some bubbles in here too. So. Right on. I did think of a way that we can uh, test to see if we've got some good yeast action in this is I'll just drop a, just a little bit more brown sugar in it. I know I've been showing the, the ground ginger in different ways and I'm really compacting it um, down in here. So when I do a tablespoon, I'm doing a real packed tablespoon I know I'm probably getting this all over the camera but yeah packed there's not much in there well <laughs> I think I'm at my volume limit as far as that goes I don't care we're gonna throw some brown sugar in it because we were supposed to do four days of feeding <laughs> you can hear it sizzling, bubbling. We'll get this stirred in here. <laughs> Alright, so note to self, maybe the larger um, mason jars will be better. But that's okay. I'm going to screw it on tight. For this one, 
let's dump a little sugar in it. You know, I hear a little bit sizzle, fizzing, whatever the proper good term for that would be. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's some good carbon dioxide action there in the yeast, so. Okay. Well, I'm getting kind of excited about this because both seem to have good active uh, yeast in them. So now it's going to be a breakdown to um, how well they'll actually ferment uh, the ginger beer. But uh, that I'm planning on doing maybe Saturday or Sunday. So uh, tomorrow I'll probably um, put these in the fridge just to uh, make the yeast hibernate. And um, uh, actually, no, I take that back. I'm going to leave them there until I'm ready to use them. Um, I may just take the pressure off the bottles, off the caps, um, just so that it doesn't start to carbonate. But uh, yeah. So far, so good. The experiment's going really well, so...